understanding the laws of success, part 1A. The top is your place. No devil can stop you. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. You are the light of the world. You are like a city that is set on the hill, on the top. On the hill. Not on the ground, not in the valley. Matthew 5 and verse 14. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Listen to me, if you are redeemed of God, no devil can cover the goodness of God in your life. You are like a city that is set on the hill. That is to say, God is making you conspicuous to your world. The kind of success that is coming somebody's way here, it will be difficult to cover. I say it will be difficult to cover. Which means, if you don't even want to be announced, it's too late. It's too late. Praise the name of the Lord. If you know where God has prepared for you, you will not set to where you are now. My own, you see, I don't even like, I don't like all these big, big things. As long as I find small, small things doing that can just be putting food on my table, I just must at least make man they get something to eat. That's not you. You don't know who you are in Genesis chapter 12. He says, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. You are the seed of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3. See what he said. He told Abraham, leave your father's house unto a land which I will show you. And verse 2, he said, I will bless you. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless you. And I will make your name great. Oh, I thought somebody would say an amen to that. And thou shalt be a blessing. Hallelujah. So, we, we are not talking about the one you will eat. We are not talking about the one your children will eat. No. He said, I will so bless you to overflowing. That is, I will so bless you that the blessing will be too big for only you. Oh, shout in the sounding amen. So, all this patching life, you are not a organizer. You have a great destiny and you will get there. Yeah. Say amen for, amen for the top. And I will get there. Amen. Hallelujah. What is success? Success is accomplishment of purpose. Number one. Accomplishment of purpose is success. So if you don't even know your purpose for living, then you cannot be said to be successful. The greatest definition of success is in relation to purpose. Accomplishment of purpose is success. Success is many things to many people. Some people see success as gathering cars. Some people see success as building plenty of houses. Some people see success as having plenty of degrees. Some people see success as traveling to many places on the earth. All these could be integrated into the definition of success. But the greatest definition of success is accomplishment of purpose. Accomplishing the purpose of existence. Accomplishing the purpose for which God created you. That's when you are meant to be successful. Now listen to me. You can gather all the cars that is 
but you can the person can still die as a failure if your purpose for living is not accomplished. Praise the name of the Lord. So what am I saying? Therefore, if you don't know your purpose for living, then you have not started your journey of success, of genuine success. Praise the name of the Lord. What is success? Number two, the capacity to make distinction out of vision. The capacity to make distinction out of vision. Here comes that word again, vision. Making distinction out of vision. Making distinction out of vision. How can you make distinction without even knowing the vision of God for your life? It is when you know the vision of God for your life and begin to pursue it, it is success. It is the distinction making the most of that vision is what we term success. What is success? Number three, it is the process of commanding good results in succession. The process of commanding good results in succession. I'd like you to note that word, succession. Success came from that word, succession. Not only having a good result now, and tomorrow, a negative one. That's no success. We are talking about commanding good results in succession. So, success is not a point. It is a journey. Because whatever looks like success yesterday, if it wasn't improved upon today, it's already a failure. So the same thing, whatever looks like a success today, if it is not improved on or validated, if it is not upgraded, if it is not continuous, it becomes a failure. What am I saying? Many years ago, what we call vehicles were so much manufactured in a way of turning potential energy to kinetic energy. And then you find that vehicle engines are made in such a way that you whine. And you jump inside and you are going, you are driving. The thing is going. After some times, you know, begins to go down. And when you get to a junction, it goes. And it stops. And the person will come down again, and everybody will be waiting. So I'm going to wait. The thing don't finish. The power don't finish. And you whine again. If they give you that vehicle now, you will almost curse the person who gave you. Say, now me, they give this vehicle, I curse you. Praise the name of the Lord. But that was what was celebrated yesterday. The world was celebrating it. But today it is obsolete. Why? Because that same product has been improved upon. Better one. Better one. And improvement is still going on. Today you can sit at the comfort of your room and use remote to start the class. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what we call success is commanding good result in succession. That is to say, as a child of God, you are not expected to command good result today and cease tomorrow. For the part of the just man, Proverbs 4:18, he 
is like a shining light that shines how? More and more and more and more unto a perfect day. That's why I know all through this month you'll be commanding good results in succession. If you believe it, can you shout it louder? Amen. You will be commanding good results in succession. If you believe it, shout the loudest. Amen. If you believe it, shout the loudest. Amen. What is success number four? Success means to be outstanding. To be outstanding. To be outstanding simply means what? To stand out. To stand out. To be unique. To stand out. To command such a, a brilliant result that will command the attention of many. Praise the name of the Lord. To stand out. To stand out. Hallelujah. To stand out. To be distinct. That's what distinction is. Distinction means to be distinct. You are just attractive. The result is just overwhelming. The result is magnetic. The result is attractive. You are standing on the same line with your colleagues. It is good, but it's not good enough. Success means you stand out. Stand out. Standing out means they are there and you are here distinct. Do you know that that's how God is turning to somebody's life to? In that business, God is making you distinct. In that career, God is making you distinct. In that family, God is making you distinct. Now, let's go back to our definition of success. We said it is accomplishment of purpose. We have also said that it is the capacity to make distinction out of vision. Which therefore means that the fundamental key to a life of success is vision. Vision. And this morning we are looking at the law of vision. 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 What is vision? Vision simply means the unfolding of God's plan as it relates to an individual. The unfolding of God's plan as it relates to an individual. That's what vision is. Unfolding of God's plan. Not your own plan. God's plan. God's plan. So God has a plan for every man. Before you were ever born, God had already finished the plan he has for you. God is not a disorderly God. Every manufacturer must have a, a purpose for manufacturing any item. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a microphone. Before ever this microphone is manufactured, there must first and foremost be the purpose. What is this microphone going to serve? What is it going to do? What is it expected to do? So, first and foremost, there is a problem. And then the manufacturer, in trying to solve that problem, look for a suitable product that can address that problem. That will be a solution to that problem. And then he goes to create an item in order to solve that problem. Now, let me quickly say, concerning every one of us, we are created to come and solve a problem. Not to be a problem. That's why you can't afford to live your life a liability. You are an asset. I'm not a liability. I'm an asset. Tell your neighbor you are not a liability. You are an asset. You are created to come to solve problem. Not to be a problem. You don't even know who you are. 
The manufacturer said, oh, when one person speaks, plenty of people cannot hear. How will I solve this problem? Let me manufacture microphone and amplifier. So, when that person speaks on that microphone, the amplifier will magnify his voice. And then everybody will be hearing the same thing at the same time. And so, if you carry a microphone and you are talking, instead of people hearing you at the same time, you are the one hearing them. Then that microphone has become a liability. It's no more an asset. Praise the name of the Lord. So you are created to solve a problem. Before ever you and I were created, our purpose was already settled. The reason for our existence was already settled. If it was not settled, you will not be created. So you are not a non-entity. No, you didn't just come to this world just to be counting trees. No, you are not a mistake. You are not an accident to your parents. He said, oh, my parents, you see, they have finished delivering children. No? They told me they have finished. After 10 years, suddenly, my mother just got pregnant. That's why I come home. Praise the name of the Lord. No, that cannot be God. That cannot be God. It is your parents who thought they were okay. But there was a problem there that nobody was solving yet. And that's what God has sent you, even though your parents thought they are finished. Your parents are not your creator. They don't have God's purpose in their hand for you. It is your creator that has your purpose. Your parents are only passage to bring you to the world so that you can fulfill God's purpose for your life. So you are not an accident. Praise the name of the Lord. You are not an accident. He said, oh, you see, my, my mother was not even married. My mother was not married. She just got pregnant for one man that he doesn't know. So now that's why my life is like this. These are, these are, these are, these are, these are like this, like this. No way! Your God is your creator. He has a purpose for you. You are not disadvantaged. Jephthah was the son of a harlot. They chased him out of the house. But later on, God made him captain over them. I make bold, therefore, to announce to you this morning that your destiny is great. God has a purpose for your life. Don't look down on yourself. Don't let the devil show you that you are disadvantaged. You are not disadvantaged in any way. Praise the name of the Lord. You are not disadvantaged in any way. No. No. Your purpose is clear. It is clear that God has a purpose for you in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. The thoughts that I think towards you. They are thought of peace and not evil. To give you an expected end. An expected end. There is already an end that God is expecting concerning you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 and 30. For whom he did for no. He also predestinates. That word is very important. Predestination. He finished your destinations before you are created. Praise the Lord. To be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many nations. Hallelujah. He said, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Oh, your destiny is glorious. I thought somebody would be excited this morning. Your destination is glorious. Praise the name of the Lord. He told Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, before I formed thee, in the belly, I, I, I knew you. I finished everything concerning you before I formed you. I am not a crash God. I am not a disorderly God. No. Before I formed thee, I knew you. And before thou camest out of your mother's womb, 
I have sanctified you and have ordained you. I have set your assignment before you. I have ordained thee a prophet. I have already set to your purpose. God is a God of orders. Order. God created the waters. He created the fishes. He didn't create the fish before the water. If not, all the fishes will die. He created the waters before the fishes. So how will God create you without a purpose? No. You have a purpose for existence. So success therefore begins from discovery of purpose. That's what we call vision. Every child of God has a well-defined purpose for our adventure in life. So living after God's purpose is what makes a scapegoat in the race of life. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Perish there does not mean that they, 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 they die. No. Perish there means you are stripped of honor. Stripped of beauty. Stripped of every glory. Where there is no vision, there is nothing glorious about a man's life. You just be merely existing without living. Where there is no vision, you become a liability to your world. Where there is no vision, you can't see anything more than every day. Give me, 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 give me. After service, you go around all the vehicles that are solid. Bros, I have dominion. I have dominion. I need transport. You move to another person. My sister, it is where. It is where. I take dominion. Take dominion in the name of Jesus. Even dominion over you and your money. My children never eat. And then that's all you'll be doing. And after you get home, you say, I thank God today is even good. Market sales today. You count the money you collect from here and there. So at least this one will help me between now and Tuesday. Is that how you are going to live your life? A whole you. God created you as a beggar? No. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have vision, you may not have money in your pocket today. But certainly, it will come. It's not money you need, it's vision you need. When you have vision, all your system will push you. When you have vision, you will not fold your hands. Anyone with vision is restless, driving after the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose for his life. A man of vision has no, he does not have no in his calendar. A man of vision has already seen where he's going, so he cannot be stopped. Lack of vision strip you of honor. Lack of vision strip you of dignity. And when people see you coming, you don't they come again? I beg that they go. It seems to come. Now to come beg you, I they go, I they go, I they go. Let's go. You make phone calls. The moment they see your name, who be this? Okay. Now you don't come again. Mm. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You call, call, call the ones that you go to to carry somebody. Say, they borrow me your phone. You use another number to call. The moment you call. Person, I'm not familiar with this number. Mm, I don't know. Should I take? Should I not take? He takes it. Hello? Who is this? And you mention, eh, hey, sorry, sorry, it's me, it's me. Mm. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That's what lack of me is. Strip you of honor. You strip you of honor. See what vision has made this commission today. See what vision has made God sound the apostle over this commission. Bishop Edoko. Everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world, 
everywhere he steps into any nation, the nation must be on standstill. Standstill. Praise the name of the Lord. Standstill. Step into any nation. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Some years ago, I was on funny mission and God's servant was coming for a program. And we had to use the stadium. And they had a national team. Their national team was to play a match and all that. So, some people were just angry about the, 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 the program. We have secured the stadium and everything. Just about 24 hours to the program. We have even started setting our equipment there. Suddenly, there came a directive that we cannot use that stadium. We will not use it and all that, all that. God intervened anyway, and at the end of the day, I just called him. I said, sir, this is what they say. He laughed and said, that verdict is cancelled. Go ahead. I say, amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So I went in that spirit against all odds. That was reverted. And we heard that program. And then people started talking. This and this and that. And how can they allow the foreigner to come and use our stadium like that? We also have pastors here. This and this. And then one of their top ranking ministers went on the altar. I mean, went to the TV and was making declaration. See, some people are saying this and saying this. How many of your pastors here? Have that kind of dignity. Are they not duping people and collecting people's money? How many of that? How many of your pastors have that kind of testimony? How many of your pastors have that kind of effect and impact? See, that man is more than president. If you just sit down here, you are talking about how many of your pastors have the aircraft? Praise the name of the Lord. That's impact speaking. Impact speaking. And all their mouth went short. Praise the name of the Lord. We used that stadium. And then in the evening after the program, the national team that had engagement, they will rush in. And where God's servant stayed the altar, they will come in there and lie down there. I'm saying, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. And yours truly. The first time ever in the history of that nation, the national team won that match in that place with 4 0. They have never had that kind of victory. And then the most, the most interesting aspect is that all the gold they scored was on the side where God's servant used as stage. Everything! Everything! And then the same minister that spoke to them went on the TV. And spoke and said, you see what we are saying? It's not to be here and be talking and be collecting people's money and be doing money. See what happened. And then, when I heard that he said so, I went to the altar. I helped him to amplify it. <laughs> Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We are talking about vision. Vision will take you to where ambition will never take you to. What is vision therefore? What is vision? Vision is the discovery of God's purpose for your life. The discovery of God's purpose for your life. What is vision? Vision is having a supernatural insight to one's placement in life. A supernatural insight to God's placement in life. Where is God placing me in life? What has he called me to do? What is my assignment in life? It is the unfolding of man's assignment. Where you belong. The reason for your existence. That's your vision. The reason for your existence. The reason, discovering the reason for your existence. What has God ordained me for in life? That's what vision is. 
When you discover vision, oh, you are on your way to the high places in life. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. My people are destroyed for lack of vision. My people are destroyed for lack of vision. Vision means to see, to see, to see, to see, to see into God's plan for your life. To see. That's what vision is. To see, to see, to see what plans God has for me. To see. It is your sight that determines your height in life. Your sight. It is your sight that determines your height in life. It is your sight that determines your rise in life. How far you can rise in life determines, is determined by how far you can see. It is your sight that determines your rise in life. It is your sight that determines your right. Your right. Your right. If you don't, cannot see to God's plan for your life, you won't know what is your right. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what vision is. Have an understanding for what vision is. How do I discover vision for my life? How do I discover vision for my life, number one? Make a demand on the altar of prayer. Make a demand. Make a demand. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch. And I will watch what he will say unto me. I will stand upon my watch. Stand on the altar of prayer. Stand. Ask God. Lord, what did you create me for? Because there is a way that cement right unto a man. The end is a way of destruction. Stand upon the prayer altar. Ask God, what am I designed for? Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Ask, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Ask. Number two, discover your unique giftings. Everybody has a gift. Discover your unique giftings. Your gift is a pointer. To the mission that God has for you on earth. Your gifts. Your gifts. Your gifts. Your gifts. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. The gift of a man makes a way out for him. He will stand before gift, great men. A man's gift maketh room for him. Your room is in your gifts. Your placement is in your gifts. Locate what you are gifted with. What you have gifted with, locate it. Everybody has a gift. Matthew 25, that servant was going, he gave all his servant gifts. So locate where your gift is. Somebody's gift may not be your own gift, so don't struggle. Don't struggle. Some people are so gifted, they can do some things very easily. Your gifts. Is a pointer to God's mission for your life, your gift. The things you do easily with little efforts but with greater impact. That's your gift. That's your gift. Some people can cook very well. It's just part of them. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of us grew to know our parents that way. People can cook very well. All this putting salt into one scale and measuring it. They don't measure anything. Our parents, the way they cook, no matter how, how bogus the, 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 the cooking is, they just carry salt. Put it. And then the thing intact. I read the story of a, a growing child. She will always see her mother when she's cooking, carry salt, put it. 
do Gary Maggie or whatever it is. Do, do, do. So the mother was asking her to work so that she can learn a daughter. And so when she, when she started cooking, after she put something and stirred this one, she would do like this. After some time, she would do like this. Ah. The mother said, why are you clapping like this? He said, ah, that's what is making the soup sweet. Because I always see you do like this. Praise the name of the Lord. Discover your gift. Your gift is what announces you to the world. That's why parents must help their children. Help your children. Don't insist that they, may, they must do what you want them to do. That may not be God's vision for their life. You must be a doctor. Because in this family, we don't have a doctor. You must be a doctor so that our family can be complete. We have engineer, we have, uh, we, have, uh, we, have uh, we have architect, we have this one. You, this doctor, Jesus, they bring your head, bring oil. And there is nothing doctoring about him. There is nothing. The boy cannot even see blood. He can't. And you say he must be a doctor. So he's struggling. He's struggling and struggling and struggling. I read the story of somebody like that. He was born with the potential of singing. And his parents insisted he must be a doctor. He tried to convince them. They said no. So he started, he started, he started struggling, 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 struggling. And finally, 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 he graduated. And even graduated as the best student with awards. And here was this day of the ceremony. They gathered the whole people, press and all. What a great day for the parents. They dressed in most sophisticated way. Invited all their friends. Possibly took Ashwabi. As the typical African man will do. It was a great day. They invited everybody and they were there. Newsmen and cameramen, they were there. Snapping them, they were posing, yeah. The proud parents of the doctor. And they were snapping and snapping and snapping. The ceremony went very flamboyant ceremony and all that. Everybody excited. They gave the boy his award. After big accolade. And they came and collected his award. And everybody stood up. The parents stood up, they were excited. I'm sure the mother will go there and grab him. Hey, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. They were very excited and suddenly they gave the boy the microphone to make his comments about the whole ceremony. And the boy took the microphone. All eyes were focused on him. He went silent. And the whole world was watching. Waiting to hear the speech of the most successful doctor. And instantly, the boy busted out in tears. The ceremony scattered. He said, this day, I'm pain in my heart. Because my parents have made me to do what they want me to do. But not what God wants me to be. Praise the name of the Lord. Discover your gifts. Your greatness is in your gift. Your room is in your gift. It is a pointer to the vision that God has for your life. Number three, identify the passion that burns in your heart. It may be a pointer to the problem you are created to solve. Judges chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. Identify what is it that attracts your passion. Maybe when you see displaced youths, you see youths that are wayward and all that, it grieves your passion. That may be a pointer to the problem God has called you to. When you see people in the, on the street, it grieves your passion. It may be a pointer to the problem you are sent to solve. When you see the things of God lacking in your way, you have passion to feel it immediately. Check it. What are the things that attract your passion? You see the sick, it grieves your heart. You want to do everything. Your passion. Identify your passion. It is a pointer. 
to God's vision for your life. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. And you can receive vision through a heavenly vision. God can speak to you. God can show you. Exodus chapter 3 verses 7 to 10. Just like he showed Moses. I'm sending you therefore to go and deliver my people from the hands of the taskmaster. You can have a vision. Acts 26, 19. God shows people what he wants them to be and what he wants them to do. Praise the name of the Lord. How do you make that vision come to pass? Number one, believe in it. Believe in it. Luke 1, 45. Engage in spiritual warfare. Number two, Satan will fight God's vision for your life. He won't just allow it. It is a fight. A fight. Fight the fight of faith. Lay hold on the things of the kingdom. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. You wrestle with every word of prophecy God has spoken to you. Wrestle with it. First Corinthians 16 9. A great and effectual door is open, but there are many adversaries. Fight the adversary. Take hold of what God has for you. And then number three, you must stay focused in the pursuit of that vision. Stay focused. John 18, 37. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay. There are many things that want to distract your attention. Stay focused. Don't see somebody doing another thing, you jump. The problem with many people is that they don't stay long on what God has called them to do. You are not called for business. Somebody just enters into business and says, oh, there is money in this thing. And then you move from your path. Nothing is happening. You jump to another thing. They are always jumping from one thing to the other. Stay focused. This ministry has stayed focused on the message we have been given. Even under criticism. That's what God has given. And that's what we kept on saying and kept on doing. That's why doors are opening. Stay focused. And then you will make the best of God's vision for your life. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. It's our covenant family day. Every family that is represented here as the Lord liveth, you are breaking forth to another realm in the name of Jesus. Every family that is represented here, God is making you a showpiece in the name of Jesus. If you are redeemed, that family is, to, is, is, is redeemed to enjoy fulfillment of prophecy. By redemption, every one of us, we know that we belong to a, a new family. We know we belong to a new knowledge. The household of God. Where evil is not permitted. The household of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. If a man be in Christ is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things. So if you are born again, whatever evil that was happening in your biological family, it is cancelled. It's cancelled. Because you have been raised together with him. Far above principalities and powers. You have been raised to a new level of life. So every generational curse, spell and enchantment that may be operating in that biological family, it cannot hold water anymore. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. In that he was made a cause for us. For cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the spirit. Through faith. So every cause and enchantment has been destroyed and broken. Concerning that family. So you are free. You are free. In Numbers chapter 23 and verse 23. Now therefore there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what God has wrought, and no more what the devil has done. So therefore, if you are redeemed, that family is saved. If you are redeemed, no cause of the devil is expected to be hanging in that family anymore. Oh, in this family, people don't marry on time. It is cancelled. 
Oh, in this family, nobody succeeds. It is cancelled. Oh, you see, in this family, nobody can be a graduate. It is cancelled. Oh, you see, in this family, even when they marry, they can't have children. Not again in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of the enemy, every generational cause that is operating in any family right now, it is cancelled in the name of Jesus. It is cancelled in the name of Jesus. It is cancelled in the name of Jesus. So I'd like you to know this morning, because of your redemptive status, no cause is expected to hang in your life anymore. No cause is expected to hang in your life anymore. I don't care what anybody has done. Your great-grandfather has done something. Today, I stand under the authenticity of the word of God. And I decree every of such effect. Cancel in the name of Jesus. God is committed to the redemption of our household. You are not only to be saved. You and your household must be saved. Acts chapter 10 verse 24. When he spake unto them, they repented. And the, on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, Colonius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. All of them, family people, they came. He preached the word of God unto them. Verse 44. And they repented. And then they were saved. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Ghost came upon them. So, any member of your family that is not born again, by the word of God today, I command the Holy Ghost to visit them in the name of Jesus. I command a turning of their heart in the name of Jesus. How do you secure the rescue of your family? Because God has raised you as a savior in that family. If you are born again, you are not born again for nothing. You are a savior in that family. How do you secure the rescue of that family? Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy to break every generational curse associated with everything they have done. Either they are idol worshippers, they have done something in the past, whatever they have done, plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Every day you wake up for your family, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Every effect of generational cause, the blood of Jesus is broken. Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 5. They may have gone following other gods. Maybe that's the reason for that generational cause. But today, by the mercy of God, it is broken in the name of Jesus. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Lord, for every family that is represented here. Lord, suffering under any yoke or spell and enchantment, I plead mercy. I plead for mercy in the name of Jesus. And number two, Enter into a covenant to serve God as individuals so as to bring an end to all generational causes, terminating or terminating every frustration in every family. Praise the name of the Lord. Enter into a covenant to serve God. Serve God. As families, serve God. Put your family to serve God. Bring them to church each time. As you are bringing them, that's how God will be touching them. One, one, you know, one and another until all of them get born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Bring them to God. Each time you bring your family member to church, you don't know what God is doing. You don't know. You don't know. My mother was somewhere before. And when we had our first son, she came to do Omugo. And then she was there every time we were her to church. She doesn't then. She didn't understand English and all that. But she just would just follow us. Don't undermine God. The Holy Spirit understands every language. She came. She will come, carry the baby and then the church. And she was coming like that. And like that. She started falling in love with the church. Even though she didn't understand all that was said. Started falling in love with the church. So one day she was telling some of our people that came to see, ah, I, I, like, I like that they are church. I like that they are bishop. He's always praying for my grandson. Praying for my grandson. Father, I like that church. I like that church. What is she saying? 
the name of our first son is wisdom. So each time the bishop is praying, he says, Receive wisdom. Receive wisdom. The wisdom of God come upon you. He said, They are always praying for our grandson. That's how she became born again. And she's dogged and ruggedly serving God up to today in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Bring your household to Jesus. Bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. Even when they grumble, bring them. Just keep bringing them. That's how the Holy Ghost will arrest them. Push them to serve God. And very soon, every member of that family will be born in, in Christ. So shall it be. May the Lord give you understanding. I prophesy every kind of satanic manipulation hovering around your family is caused to in the name of Jesus. Whatever the devil has closed in that your family, it is hereby opened in the name of Jesus. Every door he has opened, it is hereby shut in the name of Jesus. Just before I pray this prophetic prayer for your family, one more thing. If you are here this morning, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, please give me this opportunity. I will pray this very simple prayer with you. That is the step, the first step to discover what God has for your life. You cannot see into God's plan if your spirit man is not joined to him. Wherever you are, therefore, forget about who is looking at you. This is talking about your destiny. You must first of all be a family of God before you can see into his plan for your life. So wherever you are seated this morning, give me this opportunity to pray a very simple prayer with you. I will pray with you. Jesus will come into your life. And then, your destiny will begin to turn to what God has for you. So wherever you are, either you have never given your life to Jesus or you gave your life to Jesus and backslid it, you can return now. And then today we mark the beginning of success in your life. Wherever you are, you are in any of these two categories. Can I ask you to quickly rise up? Rise up quickly, quickly. God bless you. Rise up. Wherever you are, rise up, rise up, rise up. Take your Bible, your bag, whatever you came to church with, please move forward. Move forward. Come quickly, come quickly. Church, help me clap for them. Come quickly. Come, 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 come. Come to the front. Take your Bible. Don't leave anything. Come, 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 quickly. Church, help me celebrate them. Come quickly. Come quickly. I thought you are clapping more. If you clap louder, they will come faster. Can you come quickly? Can you come quickly? God bless you. God bless you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is calling you. Come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep clapping for them. They are coming. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. You are not the only one. Your destiny must beam color. Enough of frustration. Enough of mockery. Yes, this is the first step. This is the first step to a colorful and glorious destiny. Come quickly. Oh yes. Why are you still sitting down? Rise up, rise up, rise up. Come. I know something is speaking to your heart now. Come quickly, come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. Come quickly. All these wonderful people in front and those coming, join us quickly, join us quickly. We are waiting. I want to congratulate you for this decision you have taken. This decision will bring a great change in your life in the name of Jesus. Bow your head, put your right hand on your chest and say this was after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I realize I'm a sinner, but you died for me. Jesus, you washed me with your blood. My heart is open. I believe your word and I receive you today. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. Now I know I am born again. Amen. Let me pray with you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for these precious souls that you have brought into your kingdom today. I put a seal over them. None of them shall draw back in Jesus' name. For the mercy of God. Look at anything that is not of God happening around that your family. Plead for mercy now. Lift up your voice and plead for mercy. Oh, Ziza Labradia Klatosusa. Ragababo Shekleketosusa. Oh, Ledorubradi Andaranda Klatosusa Susea. Blessed be your name, Lord. Manda Rosia. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayer. Lord, I stand by the power of God to every family that is represented here this morning. Every satanic manipulation is caused right now in the name of Jesus. Satan have said no one gets married in that family. He said no one gives birth. He says no one will succeed. Every of such verdict is reversed today in the name of Jesus. 
Every manipulation that is making people wayward in that family, I command it is terminated in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is causing untimely death in any family is caused in the name of Jesus. Whatever is causing young men and women to go into adulterous act, to go into drug, today it is caused in the name of Jesus. Anyone in that family under any yoke of the enemy, they are free now. They are free now. Every spell and enchantment is cancelled over your family now. In the name of Jesus, I command every door that the devil has shut against your family is hereby open now. That demonic sickness roaming around your family is caused now. In the name of Jesus, I command from this day, open heavens for that family, progress for that family, breakthroughs for that family, long life for that family. In the name of Jesus, whatever you desire for that family, receive it now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, the yoke is over. You are free. That family is free. The favor of God will bear low on you this week in the name of Jesus. No form of accident is permitted for anyone here. In the name of Jesus. Every appointment you have this week, you will return with rejoicing in the name of Jesus. God will direct you to where your blessings are waiting this week. God will open your eyes. To see his plan for your life this week in the name of Jesus. The God of Bishop Erebo goes with you. Return with testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations.